Se o silêncio dissesse tudo Um sentimento bom que me leva pro outro mundo A vontade de te ver já é maior que tudo Não existem distâncias no meu novo mundo Tipo coisas da sétima Hey, what's up? I'm Clint Cronin, and you're listening to my show. This is episode 55 of Nemo Moretti, the Ninja Realtor, and Anthony Baker from Omni Physical Solutions. They're two of my training partners, and they're coming right out of jiu-jitsu class. So we were just training over at AKA Sunnyvale. It's the 5.30 p.m. until way too late o'clock uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu class over at AKA Sunnyvale. Again, I want to thank everybody for listening, subscribing, and I want to say rest in peace to John Dunsworth, who is Jim Leahy on the Trailer Park Boys. If you don't know about the Trailer Park Boys, check it out. They're from the Sunnyvale Trailer Park. It's a Canadian low-budget show that's on Netflix, and uh, it's freaking hilarious. Um, I love it. And uh, if you watch it and you don't get it, just keep watching. It'll get funny, I promise. Love the guy. I love the show. It's an amazing character, amazing, very multi-talented, classically trained actor that really uh, gives us all. So, um. You know, rest in peace. Sucks. He died unexpectedly. I think they were still filming another season of the show. It's one of my guilty pleasures, right? Anyway, um, again, thanks to everyone for subscribing, for listening. Thanks to Al from Want vs. Need. Thanks to uh, the, the ladies over at Bronze Humanity. Uh, they're friends of mine. So if you're if you're looking for eyelashes or some, you know, uh, sunless tanning stuff, they do that. And they're awesome at it. They're over by East Ridge Mall in San Jose. That's Bronze Humanity. Um yeah. Anyway, thanks for listening. I'm Clint Cronin. I'm that jujitsu guy telling you that my life is better and jujitsu literally saved my life. So my life is better because of martial arts. So if you aren't sure, if you want to get into jujitsu, you're not sure, you're not sure, you're, you're kind of on the fence about it. I'm telling you, get into it. Do it. Your life will be better. You'll be in better shape. You'll feel better. It might just save your life too. It saved mine in more ways than one, but literally over the summer. And if you get to know me, you start listening back, you subscribe, you listen to the last couple episodes, you'll know just how it saved my life exactly, not just figuratively. Anyway, I'm rambling. This show is a little long. Anyway, I hope you enjoy it. Anthony Baker, he's the man, Omni Physical Solutions. If you're in California and you aren't already dealing with Anthony Baker, you're probably not in that great of shape yet because I'm telling you, he's the he's the top, top trainer. You see some of his clientele, some of it's, you know, you kind of deal, you can't talk about it because they're that big. Anthony Baker's the man. Nima Meridi, he's, the, he's a real estate agent to the stars and to the jiu-jitsu people in the martial arts. He's the ninja realtor. He's with Intero out of San Jose. He's one of my training partners. Two very good friends of mine, good people. Happy to be on here just chopping it up, having a little bit of fun. We're just having fun tonight. We're having fun. We're going over some, some current events, but we're really just having fun. We're talking how martial arts helped us, how training helped us, talking some diet stuff, talking some health stuff, talking some UFC stuff, just having a good time. So um, that's what podcasts are. So if, if you think that we're people that you'd get along with, subscribe, you know, you don't have to contribute um, to, to the conversation. Just have fun, smile, laugh, be here with us. If you have comments, questions, suggestions, hit me up at Clint Crona on Instagram, on Facebook, all this stuff. You can send me an email, Clint at ClintCrona.com and feel free to uh, drop me a line. I love hearing from fans. I love hearing from listeners. To me, it's more listeners or friends, right? It's not fans. Like we're just people. Anyway, um, if you have any jiu-jitsu related questions too, um, I'm more than happy to help. Anyway, uh, Anthony Baker, Neymar Meridi, the Ninja Realtor. Episode, I want to say 55, Clint Cronin Show. It's weird still saying my name like that. It's Clint Cronin Show, right? It sounds all weird. Um, you get used to it. I did. So uh, if you haven't already, like, share, subscribe, send it to your friends. But this guy, it's a good show. That's all I'm saying. Anyway, episode 55, Neymar Meridi. Anthony Baker. I, I did actually go outside um, when the uh, the skies were gray, cloudy, smoggy, all that stuff. The air quality, they say, is 100. Okay. And in Hong Kong or, you know, China on, an, on a nice day, it's like 150. So I know it, it sucks. It sucks. A lot of people are out of house and home and whatever. But compared to China, like, we're still doing good out here. That's what I feel like our number was a couple of those days, was like 150 or something, right? Yeah, that's so supposed to be good, like a good day in China. That's so crazy yeah, to me. I was stuff, thinking yeah. about that when they were saying, like, oh, it's, it's basically all the stuff in the air is basically all the house, like the fibers and the things that have burned up. Like, we're actually breathing that stuff. Like, yeah. damn, that's so, so carbon, crazy. Carbon, ash, right? I've been feeling terrible, man. I went and bought an air purifier because of it. <clears throat> Did you? Do you yeah, have, my room. I feel like you have a, you might have a sleep apnea mask. Do you have a sleep apnea mask? I don't, but my brother does. Yeah, All right. Sleep apnea masks. <laughs>
You're getting more and more domestic. I feel like that's in the near future. Someone might convince you to buy it. Do you snore? Are you a snoring guy? Uh, I don't know. I, I But I know since I've, I've started taking my allergy shots through Kaiser, by the way, everybody should get that checked out. Um, I sleep a lot better, and I don't think I, I snore as if much. If you haven't been told that you snore, you probably yeah. don't, because someone would be like, shut the fuck up. For yeah. right <laughs> You're not being told that, so I mean... You're and probably sleeping like a baby. Ever right. since jujitsu came in my life, too, I lost a lot of weight as well. So I think that you know plays a plot with that epiglottis or whatever flap uh, easier mm -hmm. to breathe through. Okay, we'll circle back on epiglottis. We're Googling that. <laughs> We're for sure Googling that. Have you never thought? So think about that, how you can easily, without even thinking about it, take a drink and take a breath in between. It's like, how come it doesn't go down the wrong pipe? But every once in a while, you'll be like, drink it, and somebody will say something. <coughs> you get it. Mm -hmm. Your epiglottis was out of sync. Bam. Yes. So that's it's epiglottis. The I told you he's the man. All right. And he's he, dropping words on you. He dropped epiglottis. Is it really pronounced that way? It is. And epiglottis. remember, everybody, I am a medical school dropout, so... Yeah, there are some it's things uh, actually on learned. the top of your uh, esophagus. <laughs> on your top your, of your uh, esophagus. Your windpipe. That's your trachea. That's your trachea. Yeah. Yes. We'll, we'll dig a little deeper with Omni Physical Solutions. Three keys to success: uh, sacrifice, sweat, and smile. Preach. So, so what do they say? Uh, shame, shameless plug. It, yeah, no, 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 shameless plug is good. Uh, <laughs> and, is there a specific order for the sacrifice, shame, or sacrifice, sweat, shame. and smile? <laughs> sacrifice, shame. Susan Sarandon. Oh God. Superman. No. <laughs> Sa sweat. Sweat. Smile. Smile. Sacrifice. Something every day because you have to sacrifice something every day, whether it's your time or, you know, being with your loved ones. All right. That's the time. Or maybe you're going to sacrifice that sugar that you love so you can lose that weight or yeah. you're going to sacrifice some of that weight from the resistance that you're lifting because your ego is too big and you're going to lift it properly. Maybe you're going to sacrifice something else yep. you know, so. to achieve that goal. So, so I actually sat down with a nutritionist that was a special, um, an endocrinology specialist uh, type of nutritional s s person, whatever counselor, mm -hmm. and um, specifically for the type one diabetes stuff. So they're they're going through and they're telling me, you know, that this has this many carbohydrates. This has this. This is how much you take, how much insulin you have to correct for, based on the types of carbs you eat. And they proceed to take out this, uh, it was like a, it's like a Tupperware, you know, like a big plastic bin, like a Rubbermaid bin of these, like, they look like dog toys. They were like, f like rubber, like hamburger bun mm -hmm. and a rubber English muffin and a rubber, like croissant. Yeah, and like, thing, if yeah. you have this, you need to give yourself this much insulin. I was like, wait a minute. Why aren't you telling people if they have fucking diabetes, they can't have anything in this bin. Wouldn't that be what you think would be the answer? But no, they want you to keep just eating shit and buying more insulin. You don't have to take more if you don't have all of that carbohydrate. You yeah. can, and, and they tell you don't do the ketogenic diet thing. They're, oh, no, it's dangerous. You shouldn't do that. But, but then they're telling you to eat a fucking hamburger bun and a croissant. I feel like they yeah. know that people. Here, try getting closer. I feel like they know that people might not adhere to that ketogenic diet. But, I mean, coming from that medical professional, but you like, would think that they would take the advice. So but the know. penalty is literally death. Like you lose your feet, you lose your eyesight, all kinds of terrible shit. And they're saying, no, 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 just take more. No, no, that's, it's so irresponsible. And it's just the way we deal with medicine in this country. And just there's no such thing as a cure. Everything's a treatment. And they just they turned into drug dealers, man. It's fucking gross. It's 100 percent. So my wife is a registered dietitian at a local hospital here. And she tells me a lot of these stories and things that can be changed if not cured with a change in your diet and just how people just try to prescribe and like you said, be legal drug dealers. I actually showed her Baker's uh, Instagram page about eating real food and she loved it. She'd see that's what I'm talking about. And she got super passionate. <laughs> nice. But things like that, things with, you know, with diet and exercise, unfortunately it's not stressed enough because it's always just like, don't worry about that. We got a pill for it. And yes, I mean, I'm making a gross uh, exaggeration. Here, you're not though. You're not because the, to bridge that gap and the growth to bring in the grossness and to make it a tighter group because that's what people are looking for in the fitness world. Yeah, They're looking for something to just be give me this thing that's going to fix everything, but it does not work like that. Yeah, and that's why it's just so baffling to the mind that people they're hell smart really intelligent people do, can do far greater things like on the computer and even this iPhone mm -hmm. than I can, like just working it on a daily basis. I learn stuff mm -hmm. all the time. 
they're way smarter than me, but they still think there's just something out there that's just gonna like just make my stomach smaller. Well, you, you walk through any of these pharmacies, and all you see is just it's just garbage everywhere. And then they, yeah. they tell you, okay, well, you know, your dick isn't working here. Take a Viagra. It's like, oh, yeah. now your heart's beating too fast. Okay, here's how a heart pill. But the whole time. All they have to do is say, hey, my dick isn't working. Wow, that sounds like a circulatory problem. Why aren't you getting blood to your dick? Yep. So instead of giving them a Viagra, how about giving them a diet and tell them to stop with the carbs, stop with the sugar? Do some more cardio, man. Make your heart work some more. It's so no, they, but they don't because there's there's no money in that. There's no money in that. They they want to keep you as a repeat customer, and they, it, it's such a predatory system. Just the industry in general. You know how much mm. you know how much insulin costs. Like if you actually wind up being a type I don't. one, type, some some people are up to like it'll be like two grand a month. Like that's the cash price. Oh so my god, five hundred dollars a box of this bullshit. So if you have insurance, you're you're good, and the copay is like marginal. But by then you don't even really yeah. if, if you can afford that level of insurance, it's not really a big deal to you anyway. But for the, what happens to the the class of people, the working class, the blue collar people, uh, or people that are out of work, or what, what do you then what are you gonna do? You got to go to Walmart and get the, there's for twenty four ninety nine. You get the nineteen seventy nine special. It, it's literally the 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 type so of uh, technology insulin they had like back in the late seventies, early eighties, and that shit's twenty five bucks over the counter at Walmart. Wow. But if you want stuff that's not going to probably kill you, it's 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 you're looking at thousands per month, literally thousands a month. And I mean, you could say, oh, you can get this, you can get that, you know, discounts or whatever. It's bullshit yeah. though. It's complete bullshit. You set the price right there. What kind of stuff does uh? Uh, your wife, so she's a dietitian. Yeah, she's a dietitian. So she she works at a hospital. She sees patients and she sees a lot of people with diabetes. Generally, it's ty diabetes type two. She does see type one diabetes patients as well. Uh, but so you know, they recommend modified diets and how they can change themselves. So she's a big proponent on changing. You know, your like your lifestyle, kind of like essentially the same things you preach, Baker, with exercise and modified um, diets. You know, like. I've, I've listened to other podcasts before and it's really interesting to see how those things have changed. Like I remember, I think it was like in the nineties when everything was, you know, people try to go fat free, cholesterol free. Yeah. And now, right. It's, but they, we didn't really talk so much about excessive sugar, right? Like the, the glucose and, and how you could marginalize that because how much of the brain is just, is like fat, right? And a lot. And it needs that. So I think people also kind of get caught up in that word, that word glucose, because mm -hmm. our body converts the nutrients that we, you know, uh, ingest and consume and you break down for energy and everything. Yeah. It is the word glucose, but uh, it's, it gets like super technical. I guess it technically is like a sugar. Mm -hmm. So even the fruit, I'm sorry to interrupt you. I was going to say even the fruit sugar, right? Fructose. Yes, because it's like that, uh, the suffix, right? The yeah. end of it, right? That's how you can kind of start to notice the sugars and whatnot, or even a protein mm -hmm. because it'll have a different, you know, suffix. Yes. I mean, for me, I love it. The fact that, I, you know, she can break things down like, oh, this is good. This is not good. You know, every time we go grocery shopping, I love it because I see a lot of these MMA fighters and I, you know, how much they pay for nutritionists and, so, by the way, FYI, I found out that the difference between a nutritionist and a dietitian, a nutritionist is somebody like, you know, essentially self-proclaimed, um, you know, they have a good knowledge of nutrition, so they, they consider themselves a nutritionist so they can work on site at a gym, for example, but a dietitian has the credentials from the state, like she does, like, in order for me to get my real estate license, I went and took a state exam, you know, and passed it, and then I was a well, California licensed salesperson. Yes. She's the same, but on the, um, the dietitian. Side. Very nice. And grab that uh, base of the mic, pull it in a little closer right. to you. Right, okay. right into the capsule. Yeah, right there, right there, right, right into the business end of it. So, so how long have you been in the uh, real estate industry now? Off and on for years. I mean, I got my real estate license when I was a senior in high school uh, because my my dad's been in the business since I was an infant. And um, so this was a crazy. great way for me. Extra money. Yeah, I would come down from college and hold open houses. I went to Cal, so it wasn't too far the drive down open houses, you know, find a client, put them in contract. And hey, for a college kid, that's some good money. <laughs> uh, so off and on for years, but I've been doing it full time since 2014 when I when I moved back down here from Silicon to Silicon Valley. So 
this has been a family business, so it's it's you, your brother, your father, and is there any, anyone else in the family in in the in the business and over at the Ninja Realtor uh, <laughs> offices? Tell? You know, I feel like my mom would kill me if I didn't give her a shout out because um, we always joke that she needs to be on workman's comp because her wrists are hurting so much from all the bulk mail. You know, all those bulk oh. mail that you guys get from real estate agents. My mom's been doing that for my dad my whole life as well. So <laughs> she's she does a lot of these things. You know, she's been around it a lot. Um, but it's nice, um, father and son team. I, I work a lot more than I used to because I used to work in tech. I used to be in business development, but you know, owning your own business, being able to help people, structuring your day the way you like it. For me, I love it. And you too. I mean, we're all three of us here. We're essentially, we're, we're all three business owners and, you know, we kind of like to do what we like. And when you, when you have a passion for what you do, the job becomes so much easier. If not, it's, it's not even really a job. And that's how I feel about real estate. So have you been able to network pretty effectively, you know, based on people you've met in jujitsu and sort of the martial arts world? I mean, have you been able to like kind of connect the dots on that? Yeah. I mean, I, I've sold three people homes or sold their home or bought them a home in our gym, just AKA Sunnyvale. Very Um, cool. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, I mean, it's somewhere where I go every day and now People just ask you, you know, like, hey, how's the real estate market when we're, when we're you know, in between drills? Um, and I always wanted to be that guy. I'm not very aggressive with my marketing. I, I like to be, you know, on social media and things like that. But I don't go out there and ask people, Have, are you are you looking to buy or sell? Are you looking to buy or sell? I just want people to know that I'm in the business. And if they ever have any questions about, like, their existing home, and it doesn't necessarily have to be about buying or selling, but even if they're curious about property taxes and, you know, Prop 60, Prop 19, look those up, by the way. Um, you know, but same again, <laughs> prop 60 and prop 19 about like selling your home and, and not taking a big hit on taxes. If let's oh, say you just... wanted to sell your home in Santa Clara County and move to Ventura County, for example, is that a capital gains or no? Yeah. So capital gains, state tax, things like that. So it, it, and you know, so they get curious about these things. So I want to be that guy that they go to. I want to be that resident <clears throat> dude. So for me, that's all I try to do. And, um, if any, when people come and ask me about real estate, it just makes me really happy. I mean, so many of the guys, even at One World, like they just come up to me, like, "Hey, how's the real estate market?" And I get really excited about it. Just yeah, think of that's me. what's up, dude. That's, that's, that's the up. job, man. <laughs> and so, Anthony Baker, Omni Physical Solutions, right? Yeah, that's it. You got the business cards out now. They're on the good card stock too. They're impressive, and boss, right. and everything. Thanks, man. So you got your whole thing going now. You're doing the training. You've been doing a lot more online videos. You've been doing Motivational Monday for you know over a year now. Trying to be consistent as possible. So, um. How, how has that gone in terms of uh, you know people from jujitsu? Have you been able to help anybody sort of uh, sort of apply any sort of the flexibility or strength stuff to their BJJ? Or? You know, I I think so. I think so. I haven't like um, maybe just like one or two actual clients, maybe like on a short basis, because I feel like people that do jujitsu, they have a little bit of discipline in them, like a certain amount. That when if you kind of show them something, they can you know take it on on their own. Yeah, do you know what I mean? So it's really easy just to kind of like show people because they'll they want to get better at jujitsu, so it's like something easy to do. Just yeah. do this, and they're like, I'll do that. I, I, this will make me better at jujitsu. I'll do that for sure. I'm like, all right, cool. I feel like you have a couple of windows in people's jujitsu career to actually get through to them. Like, there's a couple places where people are extremely stubborn. Um, between some of like the middle belts, people don't want to hear shit from anyone. Like they're pretty sure they figured it all out <laughs> the very beginning. And then like once they're already pretty seasoned or if they get injured, like they'll yes. listen then, but like it's, it's hard, like a lot of like the purple belts or like a newer brown belt or like even a per, like the blue belt guys that have been blue belts forever. Like, dude, I should, I should have my belt off. Like those guys, you, you, I don't think you can tell them shit. More than likely not. <laughs> Until they get injured, because yeah. there's you get very like headstrong periods between the like in their in their journey. It's crazy to see like just personality and sort of like maturity development over the course of people's like belt progression. And it sounds like really silly to to say like oh we're just you know a bunch of adults and you, you'd think that you know we're all just you know it's just a belt where everybody loves to roll but in no. pajama bottoms <laughs> yeah but it's you, you really start to see like how people's you know rationale and how their uh their mental aspect is behavior They're, patterns for yeah. sure and uh you know, there's there's all different types of things. Like, there's always like the, the the types of people in your gym. There's like the the, the guy that sits over there doesn't talk, he doesn't roll. The one that's always injured. The one that like there's all these the guy with the dirty gi. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> and you're like, oh, you're not supposed to stereotype. But it's, all those characters and personalities, yeah, yeah all they, kinds. But like they're like repeatable through like every gym is a funny thing. Yes. 
So, so we have uh, U.S. Open is coming up uh, November fifth. I'm in. Uh, Nima is not. He's going to be doing Gorilla Jiu Jitsu, the Grand Prix in Pleasanton. Yeah. Which, if you're in the Bay Area and you're you're like, I don't know if I should do a tournament or not, you totally should. Um, I believe because one, you'll get better. No matter if you win or lose, you'll be better that Monday. You'll have stuff to work on. But really, if you're afraid of it, then you really should do it. Just knowing how you handle that difficult situation and having your own hero's journey, having your own hero's tale of like having that peak and valley. Like it was something I was afraid of. But I showed courage and I got through it and I did it. I faced it. Now I know what, like, how do I handle a, a fight like scenario when you're confronted with somebody right in front of you? Like, how do you deal with that? And a lot of people, if, if you're thinking of having kids, having a wife, family, whatever, you want to know how you deal with that pressure. You really do. And I, I can't uh, urge people enough. I'm not going to make any of my students ever compete. I don't do that. People are on their own free will to do it. I encourage it. And I'll put in the extra hours to train them and make sure they're prepared, make sure they're confident, make sure they're coached. And uh, win, lose, or draw. As long as they make weight, don't miss. F- yeah. Don't you. F- oh, don't you. Be miss. a professional, Tammy. Even don't though you're not getting miss paid, like that weight. I'm not either. So you know what I'm <laughs> saying, like, if, if I'm gonna if I'm gonna take the extra time, um, please be courteous enough to accurately assess your own body mass, um, and know what your weight is. I'll I'll bring the scale. We'll we'll weigh you together. I just want to make sure that if we're putting in the time, that time isn't wasted. I have a confession to make. Mm. I've missed a weight one time. Really? Point two over. Oh. Did they let you do it? Point two. He said D- DQ. Damn. So this is a now this is a veteran now coming to you. Okay. Yeah. I've lost tournaments definitely on having my guard passed, and then they'll get just the difference in one or two points. How much is it for a pass guard? Three. Mm. Mm-hmm. Take downs two. Pass guard three. Mm-hmm. Well, sweeps two. So it's like pass guard, and they'll get those three points. And then they're up by one. Mm-hmm. Oh, mother. Damn. MF or so lose like that. And so also DQ off of point two. So here's a, from a veteran, right? Work on the how Clinton said it'll make you better. I've definitely lost tournaments that way. So that how can, that's how I can make you better. And advice number two, take another gi. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, another gi. I would be like, it would have been boom. Oh, make weight. Yeah, they're like having like the, a nice Two lightweight gi, a nice lightweight one. Have the extra, and make sure you actually have a belt with the rank stripe. That rank bar, they will not let you compete at a lot of these if you don't have the rank bar on your belt. Just little stuff, and you got to make sure like rank bar, or just like that black strip. Well, that's what that is. Okay, yeah. for sure. Okay, so the breakdown of the belt, right? You I got, thought you meant like uh, a little white strip. Sometimes fools get like stripes. So that's where, it's I, where the stripes will go. Yes. So you have the belt itself. There's a logo on the one side. Don't worry about that. Then there's. If, if it's a jiu-jitsu, jiu-jitsu belt, there's going to be a black rank area, rank bar. And then there's going to be any number of stripes. So so they do like the growl, like the ones, two, three, four. Then you get the next belt, right? Some gyms do stripes. We never had them. I don't know what the fuck they are. But, but then if you see a belt where there's a stripe on each end of the rank bar, those are instructor stripes. Okay. Mm-hmm. So that's if you're at a gym and you're not sure like, hey, who teaches here? Who doesn't? If you see those stripes, that should mean that they're rank bars. Like... Uh, the, the ones that, um, the black belts that at one world, all of us teach. So they all, the, the Kataro belts with the rank stripes right there. So you'd know, like, hey, that guy right there, I can ask a question. It's probably right ish. Cool. You could probably trust that information, <laughs> yeah. but they make them in all levels. You can get a blue belt that has the rank stripes on And you might be in a place where there is no purple belt, brown belt, black belt, whatever. And that blue belt might be gospel and take it. Like, that's your instructor. Cool. Um, back in the day when you were a blue belt in like 2000 freaking four or five, whatever, when I got into this stuff, if you had a blue belt, like you were, you were the shit. You were there, tough. Were, there were not many here and the black belts were like, are, are we sure he's human? Are we <laughs> sure? He, like, I don't know for sure. Like, I've never seen a real black belt because it's, just, it took forever. It took forever. Like, I look physically like a different human being between when I started and now. And, like, and actually, almost two years into having my black belt, it's like, it's still surreal. It's still like, what? Dude, time goes away, dude. Time disappears. I have an interesting story about competing. So, this Illust gi that I'm wearing right now, shout outs to Illust. Um, it's a, it's one of the lightweight ones. And I usually have a go to Shoyer roll, that black one absolute that I like to compete in. I never knew how heavy they were. Dude. <laughs> like four to five pounds, right? So for BJJ Tour, um, I was really concerned because I was weighing myself on the scale that I have at home. And with me, I I usually find out like within 
five days before a tournament if I'm going to be holding an open house that weekend for like one of our listings, right? So it's, I'm always, you know, I have to pay that late registration. It's always, you know, and then I get really nervous. I'm like, okay, now I really have to get ready. So there's always a lot of stress involved. And I was worried about making that weight like you were talking about. But then I found out about these lightweight competition geese, and this is definitely what I'm going to be carrying with me going forward just in case I run into something. I'm like that. telling you, it's so maddening. Yeah. Because every once in a while, even like when you get in the bullpen, they'll give you some extra time. Mm -hmm. You can go take go to the bathroom or something, right? Go yeah. pee or whatever. But in that moment at that tournament, they're like, it's time to go now. I'm like, can I go to the bathroom real quick? like, nope, dude, it's a DQ. I'm like, dude, it's so dirty. Yeah. But that's, then that's when I was thinking maybe they're just trying to collect the dollars. Yeah. You know I'm like, oh, let's just get his money, get him out. I'm like, what's up? I was hot. <laughs> but that's when you have to just cut that weight. You know, yeah. maybe I was being too lax early on, you know. Just take it from me to have those two. If I had a second gear, I would have probably been able to make it. So, so all he, bad. Here, here's the thing: um, support structure when you're competing, right? Yes. So we, uh, you, you have the resources uh, at, at at a good gym. Take advantage of them. Talk to your coaches. Don't just sign up last minute. I know it's like oh, I didn't really train for it. Don't get like because that's built in excuse shit. That's jujitsu bitch assness. And it applies. <laughs> no, there's there's like a global bitch assness where you're like, it's it's what it is. And this goes back to Lloyd Irvin stuff. I, I don't know if you like him or not, but he had some very valid points back in the day, and he called it jujitsu bitch assness. It's like um, if I were to sign up right before a tournament and don't tell nobody. Right, mm -hmm. you look at the bright line over there. Maybe I'll go. Let me I'll slide through. I'll slide. I'll, I'll slide through. It'll be all good. And what happens is, if you win, you're like, dude, I barely even trained for it. But mm -hmm. if you lose, you're like, yeah, I didn't even train for it. I was sort of thinking I just do. It. This is a built-in excuse. It's self-defeating bullshit. It's it's cowardice, and it's not honest. You got to be honest with yourself. Like we're in the last honest job. This is the last honest profession. Yeah. No bullshit here. No bullshit here. Your performance is where you stand in the pride of lions. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying we're not a family because we're family as fuck. Like, you know, no matter what goes down at that gym, like if you're inside those walls, you're part of a family and we can bicker amongst ourselves. But like we roll together, like every single person from that gym, no matter what the fuck they do, is invited over here uh, to, to my house. They, like, they've all been here. And the neighbors love us because they know, you know what, they, maybe they're, they're loud listening to the UFC, watching UFC, whatever, but they're safe. Yeah, because we love they, that camaraderie. The, the next door neighbors, we have we have old people right over here. We're in a duplex in the suburbs, and we could we had UFC whatever a few of them on where there were how many like 50, 60 people here. Yeah, easy. When Ron, yeah, well, Holly Holm beat Ronda we, Rousey. We had, a, we had a separate TV in the backyard because the seventy five inch in the living room there was not enough fucking real estate for everybody to sit even on the <laughs> floor on top of each other. So we had a separate one in the backyard for people to watch. That's how many people rolled through, and the neighbors didn't care why because they knew they were safe because we were here. Because that's jujitsu. That's the family we have there. So if you're in there, it's family, right? So take mm. advantage of that structure. So when you go, when you're going to go compete, have that extra gi, have the correct belt, have all this stuff. Make sure it's washed. Make sure there's no tears. Read the requirements, like the patches and stuff. Like people go overboard. You know, you get your sponsors. Hey, if you can get money from jujitsu, nothing but love. For, you know what I'm saying? Because it's not easy. There's not much money in the sport. So if you Where can get paid, it? if you can get free gear. Like if you can get people to look out for you, if you got the want versus need hookup and they get you a gi and you're like, dude, I love you, man. Thank Send you for the hookup. Send it my way. Right? Then I'm going to rock that. I'm going to wear that, the, the, the want versus need gi. I'm going to compete in there and I want mm -hmm. them to know, be like, hey, represent this brand because they're Bay Area and they supported me. Spitch. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. So if you if you can get something like that, get it. But watch where the patches go. You want to put One World on there. You want to put AK Sunny. You want to put whatever your team is on there. However... There's certain places you can't have them. So you got to go to the, check the rules for whatever you're competing. You're giving them a hundred bucks. You want to go out there and do your best. Cause you're like whatever you did in the gym, uh, all the moves, you know, and how good you hit them in the gym. You got five, six, seven minutes, depending on your belt level to go out there and just make it happen. And it, it probably ain't going to be that pretty. I, I've seen some of you guys pull off some yeah. shit where I was like, I didn't expect him to do all that. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, no, just hold position real quick. And like, sometimes y'all like Stan gets fancy. Yeah. You see, like he's won with spectacular wins, and I'm like, yeah, I taught him that. <laughs> <laughs> nice, yeah. but you know what I'm saying? Like, so if if you can if you can get out there, make sure you have that support system. Talk to your coaches. Sign up early. Sign up early. Mm -hmm. We'll go, we'll get to the right weight. Like if if you if you tell me as somebody who comes to my class as a student uh, as a, or somebody that we just that just trains at me, hey, I'm thinking about competing. Do I roll with you? I'll train you. I'll look at what you're doing. We'll video it. We'll do matches, whatever. And we'll, if you want to do a different weight, let's talk about it first. Let's talk about what you're eating. 
Um, and if it's, if it's, if it's outside of the scope of my expertise, I have that support structure. I promise yeah. like between this dude and we got a nutritionist over here with his wife, like we will get you onto that podium one way or another. We'll get you on that podium. And like the, the one, I, cause, uh, Lale, uh, the, 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 the Persian girl mm-hmm. in, in my morning class said she wants to compete. Cool. Nice. We're going to get you on the podium. I, nice. I was not able to come. I, I said, come to open man on Sunday night. Mm-hmm. I was like, um, I'm not going to be able to be there. I'm going to be out of town, but, uh, Tess. You know, Tess. Oh, uh, yeah, Tess yeah, Casey. Black Belt. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, she's like top, top level. Like her yeah. and Christina Barlon have tremendous rivalry for years since like blue purple belt. I saw when I tried when I trained with Baker there last week at One World. So I wasn't able to be there. I'm like, I talked to Tess. I was like, hey, my student, she's gonna be competing. Could you, you know, talk to her, roll with her, train with her, talk? I want to make sure that my students succeed. Cause if you're gonna go out there, it's it's scary at first. But here's the here's the cool part about US Open. US Opens at the Cow Palace. It's a fucking legendary place. Mm-hmm. How many, like Palace. just Google Cow Palace and like the, if, if, first of all, I'm a pro wrestling fan, so that was like the mecca. That's like the Madison Square Garden of the West Coast. Cool. Like every big name has been there. So to go out there and to be able to perform under, when the lights are on you, yeah, like yeah. I like it now. It, it took it to like brown belt to where like I looked around, and saw a crowd, and I'm like, fuck yeah, let's you do appreciated this. Appreciated that. Yeah. Oh, I like it. I like it. I, I like it now. Like I, I used to be all. <gasps> Now I'm just like, yeah, that adrenaline Jeez, tight. And if I can say, right, <laughs> if I can share an ex- like an experience that I had, I know you and Jake Bell always say, you know, compete, 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 because this is what you learn. And I, I appreciated you coming down uh, to Santa Cruz the last time I, I competed at All Stars. And I learned a huge thing. You know, I, I, I try to go for a scissor sweep. Uh, my opponent passed my guard and uh, held me inside control for like two minutes. And that was the match right there. But now, I won't make that mistake. It's the same thing that you you and Jake always say. Like, I'll remember that underhook now to get out of that. You know what I mean? He just Dude. held me tight and I couldn't get out. So I'm not going to ever make that mistake <laughs> no. again. But if I wouldn't have competed, I don't think it would have taken like 10 or 15 times before so I learned. That, yeah. that tournament is significant because I told you I would be there. Yeah. I was in Las Vegas visiting my mother. I was mm-hmm. doing I was doing my little hustle. Yeah. I drove directly from Las Vegas. Didn't even stop at my house. All my shit was still in my car to coach that tournament. That's why I was so bummed I, out, man, when that guy was holding me inside control. Like, man, Clinton came all the way down no, here to corner I, me. <laughs> no, you, you, you showed up. You made weight. You fought hard. You, uh, Your performance at Naga, man, you did really, really well. I was Thank surprised. You, I was like, oh, okay. So, but, like, when, it, when when someone's about to pass your guard, you got to just drill this. You always have just frame, hip escape, frame, hip escape. Yeah. Make them earn that pass. Hell yeah. Every single time. Because, like, if you have it in you to where you can just be all the time when you're training, guard pass drill. This is when you got to focus on it. you got to mm-hmm. focus on, I always have one more hip escape, one more hip escape. Now it's muscle memory. Oh, yeah. You're not you're sucking wind doing it. You're not like, oh, he's going to pass my guard. No. You want that, 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 he, I got to do this now, 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 that anxiety mm-hmm. on your, your passer, not on on you for you this is just another day at the office you've been hip escaping every class for the last how many years yeah you always got one more hip escape in you and because you know what happens the one time when they start chasing their tail when they get excited they overshoot it that's an arm drag there's your darts there's your back take boom you know how many times i finish yeah. people just because i one more hip escape one more hip escape and you have it in you that's hard i can't tell you I, I don't have as many fingers and toes on my body to count how many times you've said that about you know pushing for that hip escape fighting for it and not just giving it up like okay you got me and again going back to the competition like this is when you see those types of things right yep. i remember during the holidays when um you teach class you know because most of the gym was closed and i remember i think you made us drill butterfly pass to side control like literally three days in a row. And I think on the third day, I was like, hey, Clinton, can we do something different? Remember? And you're like, no, because you got to do this like a hundred times each side to be able to get this down. So it's that drilling, right? And it goes back to your buddy who was on your podcast that one time when I was listening to uh, Drillers Make Killers. Oh, it was uh, Boogeyman. Yeah. Shout uh, out to Richie Martinez, bro. 10th Planet Sunny, uh, San Diego. San right? Diego. Yeah, yeah. I remember that. And I won't forget that. Drillers Make Killers. So uh, Jake always makes us do those drills every single time. It's the same things. And if you're not hitting it like a pro, like a black belt then man you got work to do you make <laughs> sharpen that dude how many yeah. times have we done um wild bill the the sit, it's sit up sweep it's a sit up sweep we, yeah. we, we call it wild bill that, that that's like the one code word name we have at one world nobody even knows it so but nobody even does it if you watch people compete how many times from close guard do you see people do the sit up sweep yeah but we do we drill it all the time mm-hmm. so we're probably not drilling it enough cuz it works like and, and it's it's not just doing the moves you got like you like so when I'm teaching class, I'll I'll show the moves and then I'll, then like once we drilled it, the fundamentals like how the mechanics of it work, 
that's only one thing, but how does it fit into your puzzle? How does it fit into your game? Like, how does it fit into the system you're trying to build? Like, I'm trying to build my system, like my pass in, in, into top top control. I have hubs I work from. I have I have like cause effect. Like, I know exactly where I'm going. I have places I'll re, I'll go back to mm-hmm. if if they're about to start escaping. Like, I have hubs I work from. Like, I'm like okay, I th- I have a system from here. I have a system from here. I have a system from here. It's not as static as it sounds. It's just I have safe place. Like, I have bases of operation. Totally. You know my you know I got the sit rep freeze thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. So. In in this case, it's like, well, I want to know the move, right? So we're saying sit up, sweep, sit, boom, you hit it. You get up on your hand, you hip out, boom, hit him, hit him with your lap, you're good. But situationally, when does it occur? Well, a great way that we're doing it in the fundamentals class this week. So last we did, we actually did sit up sweep last week, and then we said, okay, we're gonna we're gonna show these sweeps, very basic close guard sweeps. We're gonna show them on Thursday. We drilled, we drilled the whole class that it wasn't even rolling. It was just fundamentals class, an hour, a bunch of white belts, a couple of blue belts, whatever was there, drilling some very basic techniques. I said, okay, now Tuesday, what I want to do is, all right, so for sit up sweep, here's the situation. We're going to go for a cross collar choke. We're going to break the guy's posture down and they're not going to like it. And they're going to break the gut and posture back hard. When they posture back hard, we're going to wait for their weight to be over their own hips and a little bit exaggerated. Then bam, we're going to hit that sit up sweep. Yeah. And we're going to do that over and over. And they got to really go for the choke and really posture back. So situationally, it's like this is when you hit it. Because if you just sit there and go, like, you'll never get it. Because contextually, you're not going to understand where that move fits in. Right. If, you, if they're if they're like, you know, their their weight's heavy on you, they're holding their hips down. The minute you try that, they're going to take your back. Every single time, they're going to take your back. So understanding when the move is supposed to occur. Because the right move at the wrong time is still the wrong move. You can't just force shit. I like triangles. I'm going to do fucking triangles all the time. Go ahead. See how, see how well that works. You're, you're just throwing guard. it off. Pass now. You're going to get your guard pass. No, it's like there's every moment has its place, right? Yeah. For everything. Like there's timing. Like, you know, you, you're going to find the love of your life. <laughs> you're going to find the love of your life. You're going to ask her to marry you. And she's going to be like, what the fuck? I thought we were getting gas. Like we were going to Burger King. What are you talking like, about? No. That's awkward. Because no. the timing's off, right? You yeah. got to like, you got to smooth in that shit. I love Burger King. Burger King. I haven't been Burger King in a long time. That was actually uh that's a funny story for another time. Oh. Birking. Yeah. Oh man. Anyway, I, I, I go on tangents about this. I'm very passionate about my teaching. I'm very passionate about jujitsu. I'm very in general, like jujitsu has given me so, so much. It saved my life. Yeah. It's contagious, man. Literally saved my life. And I figured to leave. People say that you just, 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 just shut your mouth. No, it, it literally. literally saved my fucking life. It literally saved my life. Yeah. And oh, you are so good. Hey, I can say that too, man. And, and it, it's it's You're kept right. me out of you know, doing like, like going out and like, let's say to those happy hours with uh, my colleagues after work and drinking like they do until like, you know, 9, 10 PM, whatever. Uh, I have a place to be I'm like, no, you know, I have to be on the mat. I'm going to go, I'm going to go train right after the um, work and, and go home. Right. And so for me, it's, it's helped me with my schedule. It's helped me with my discipline when, yeah. with respect to life stuff, you know, like things discipline. that you need to do as like, let's say like as a husband, as a son, whatever. Uh, but even my career, listen, I don't care if it's 35 degrees outside or 115 degrees outside. I'm going to go in my gi and I'm going to train. And a lot of people look at me crazy, like when they're going to the beach to have Coronas or whatever, and I'm going to go and do guard pass drills in my gi, you know, in the middle of the summer yeah. with no AC, like we we don't have AC at our gym. But you know what? That separates us from them, you know, and and that passion is contagious. I think it's helped me so much in my life just uh, with patience. Um uh, with obviously with health, but even my work, my business, because there are times when I don't want to get on the phone and dial prospects and call them and all those things. But the, at, for the s- same time, there's times when I'm tired and, you know, I don't want to go train or whatever. And I tell myself, tough luck, go take a Red Bull. You're going to get on the mat regardless. So shut up and stop complaining. Get in there. And I've gotten like that with my work too. So I can thank jujitsu for my success in real estate as well. So, so that, that lesson you just described right there, that no matter what, you know, Class time is class time, and nobody. The one thing I tell my students: if you don't learn the fucking hip escape, cool. If you don't learn whatever I'm teaching, cool. One thing that I try to tell everybody, and it, it, nobody, and I mean nobody, <laughs> nobody wants to hear a grown ass man complain. Yeah, no one cares. No one. Get, they'll act like they give a fuck, but they stop respecting like a little bit after the second time. Mm-hmm. Don't don't complain when you think you're about to complain. Like wait. Let me hip escape real quick. Let me frame me a hip escape. I got one more. And what is it? What is it going to take to get through this? Stop, breathe, assess the situation. How do I fix this by 1%? How do I make the situation 1% better? Mm-hmm. And then you're probably good. If I just take a deep breath, we're good. We're good. 
And, yeah. and, and there's there's biohacks for all this stuff, man. If you're down, if you're feeling down, what does down look like? I learned this from Tony Robbins. This is some real shit right now. <laughs> Preach. Hold on right now. Hold on. I'm going to put the mic back right here because I don't want to fuck this up. <laughs> it, Preach, If brother. you're feeling down, what does down look like? Is down like this? Do I feel down right now? No. Down's like, man, I don't know. You talk slow. You're like, oh, man. Yeah. I, don't, I don't really feel like it. But if you start feeling that shit, you know what it feels like. If you start saying, man, I'm ready to go. Let's fucking do this. Let's do this. Talk louder. Talk. Fix your posture. Talk loud. Talk like assertively. Let's go. We're going to do this. We got this. If you have to do it in the mirror, you got to do it in the rear view of the car. If you have to do it pulled over on the side of the road, if you got to do it on your smartphone, yeah. get on Instagram. Why to Instagram? Tell them you fucking get feel ready. Because it ain't a lie no more. Because after you do Word. it, there's, there is a biological response to that shit. Guys, you, I use you can we call them affirmations, it. right? I use them every day at work and training. I mean, we tell ourselves that before we get on the mat on a tournament, and I tell myself that every single time before I go to a listing presentation when I want to get a listing. I tell myself, I got this, I'm the man, you know, and it's we call them affirmations, right? Yeah. You boost it up. I mean, if when you tell yourself that, you start feeling it, and I tell you every single time it helps me. Yep. Every time. That's awesome. You, you, what, like whatever, you, like you're excited, you're amped, you're motivated, you're positive. What's what does positive look like? It's postured, right? Right? Yep. You're not you're not talking slow. You're not talking down. You're saying, I'm ready for this. We're doing this. Let's go right now. Your back straight, your shoulders are that's back. That's it. Yeah. That like that's some Tony and Robbins shit. Out. Chin. Yeah. And that's why people are paying that guy 10 grand to see him talk. Because mm -hmm. he gets you motivated, he gets you worked up. I bet you it's worth it. Dude, my I, dad went on a coal walk. See? Tony Robbins had one of these seminars, like when you go on a coal and it's like the, the like in your mindset of you know conquering that. He did it. See? That's a trip. Dad's a very <laughs> positive guy. I like your dad. Thanks, man. He really is. He, I, I have, you know, when you're younger, you're not supposed to like your, you know, your dad. You're supposed to like not listen to him. But the, the older I get, I'm like, man, I'm such a shithead for those years that I didn't listen to him. No, I think, it's the wisdom, I think uh, you have maybe have that wrong. I think it is our place when we're young to just rebel, you know? Yeah. Some, you know, because you might be more sheltered later than, you know, you rebel later. You yeah. rebel earlier in life than you reflect back, right? Then yeah. you're like, oh, man. That was like 27 when I started to mm -hmm. be like, oh, my parents, you were, you were absolutely right about everything yeah. you said when I was younger. And they're like, oh, about time you came around. Mm -hmm. Came hey, around. Hey, the, the yeah. older I get, the more I commend this guy. So my dad's a cancer survivor, right? A sarcoma in his kidney and they had to remove his kidney um, and, you know, some associated muscles as well, like in his, in his leg. And that was the biggest reason, actually, why I moved down back down over here from Oakland. Um, but when he was in the operating room, the, the surgeon said it was a 50-50 chance uh, that he was going to survive. So obviously me being all emotional, uh, and I was looking at him and I was crying and he wasn't crying, but I was crying. And he said, let me tell you something, son. And he told me in Farsi, he said, this cancer, this sarcoma, pick the wrong guy to mess with. I'll see you in a little bit. Mm -hmm. right. And he pulled out for me. Yeah. You know? His father's a fighter. Yeah. He's, a, that's, he's a wrestler. That's what he told me. He said, yeah. he said he, uh, he's been fighting his whole life. He mm -hmm. says, this has got nothing on me. <laughs> he was a wrestler when he was a kid, you know, and he went to state, yeah. our equivalent of state champions. Like he, when he was, when he told you when he was talking to you but at the same time his whole life he's been fighting for human rights you know so many of his friends were executed and yep. killed and stuff uh you know when when the uh, revolution happened in iran in 1979 you know so he went from like the mat to like you know uh human rights and all that Three. stuff and he's still like that and i he always says you got it from me i tell you you get you get your fighting side from me <laughs> no, he's, he's, a, he's a very very wise guy very warm too very like very warm, very welcome. We're huggers. Oh, totally. Yeah, I, I saw that. Like, I, I, I when I met him, I, I got where you do your thing completely. You guys <laughs> yeah. are very, very like uh, hugging. We're me. emotional guys, you know what I mean. We we wear the emotions on the sleeve. <laughs> no, this is this is like a sign of maturity, you know. Just the uh, without you got a lot of people that they don't have the uh, the wherewithal or the maturity to sort of um, like accurately sort of uh, express their emotions or express their feelings. It's cool. To say, eh, it's just okay. Yeah. Or, uh, or I'm angry. Angry is easy. I'm pissed off. It's cool to say that. Mm -hmm. But like, when's the last time you've seen like just regular guys like your age say they're happy or they're sad about something? Unless it was something major, like no. something. Nobody says it. Why? People are emo because they know they are sad, but I think but they won't. They won't. The happiness because they don't. It's like uh, vulnerable. But the, the, it is. But also, vulnerable. so is sad. What they do is they're like, they'll transmute that shit when they're sad. So if something you say to them makes them sad, right? Mm -hmm. They're going to say it. They're going to process it. And they're going to be like, hey, fuck you for this making me sad. I'm going to be angry at you. And I'm going to hurt you back. Right. Mm -hmm. That's what we do. Yeah. Like, that's just people in general. So, like, you have this huge communication gap just all across this culture. Like, people just don't communicate properly. But look at all the wars we have. 
Look at, no, just no. like it, it, and there's way more and than or in the world. There's so like there's just in the world in general. There's more and than or. If I have an opinion that differs from yours, if you sit there and just like like just write down like ten aspects of your opinion on a whiteboard, and I write ten of mine, and we look at them, we're like, oh, like it's not. We're talking about like totally different things. Mm -hmm. But people like so badly want to be heard and want because there's so many fucking people in the world, man. And like we got this fucked up way of dealing with feelings and dealing with just 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 concepts in general people get so married to ideas and stuff and instead of just saying hey man this is just a valid opinion like just being reasonable super like, tribal super tribal oh, fuck you i'm right fuck you you're wrong kind yeah. of thing and it's weird it's it's really unhealthy just want to categorize everybody and put them in a box you know label everybody absolutely 100%. or like totally demonize someone that just disagrees with you yeah. like just because you disagree with me doesn't make you this evil person and by the way you're the only quickly. person clinton that i've said that, that I'm sorry that you that has said there's more and than or and I like that you've said it a few times on your podcast and it always resonates with me. I remember you also said it with Justin Wren. There's more and an or. I like that. There, there is, and I, I think it's really easy to get caught up in our own ego and our own bullshit and our own pride. We're like we're very like defensive and just walled off from the world because everybody's just trying to protect themselves. Everybody's out for themselves because like culturally. And we're in this society where they, they pretty much have us convinced that whatever we're doing to not directly help ourselves is directly hurting ourselves. Right. So we're conditioned to self-interest with emotion locked away. That's what they call normal. I'd rather be insane. <laughs> yeah. That's some punk rock from 1987, motherfuckers. <laughs> Baker, fucking, you're on a roll with this Motivational Monday stuff. What's your, what's your, it's Monday, man. What was your topic it today? It is Monday. So my topic today was to focus focus Breach. on not just the important things but keeping things you know in uh, keeping things in perspective okay everyone hates monday and i'm not really sure why but really there's only 52 mondays in every year so i counted this one this year you know for this particular motivational monday there's 53 okay mondays this year we're down to the last nine and ten of those motherfuckers. Down to the last few. Have you guys ever heard how heart attacks usually happen on Mondays? Statistic. I mean, not usually happen on Mondays, but statistic really? statistically more on Mondays than any other day. I believe it. These people are getting so stressed, and I don't understand why. Mm. It's just like they just are just not looking forward to going back to it. Mm -hmm. So you have to do something else then. You have to do something else. If you're not looking forward to it, you have to do something else. That's just it. I like that. Yeah. I like what you did there. Yeah, my hair. <laughs> Man, there's jujitsu hair. Sorry, guys. I, I don't get the upset on Monday thing. I don't and... get it. It's like well, th this Monday, it's sitting the rest yeah. of the week. Right? My dad calls Monday's can... opportunity. Hell yeah. You can have you know? a good day every and, day. And it's the way you can set your week up, right? Your productivity week. week. Man, set I... the line of discipline. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Set the line of discipline in my on Monday, no matter what time it is. Ten o'clock. What time is it right now? It's nine sixteen on Monday, the seventeenth. Right? I'm not sure when you guys will see this. Doesn't matter. Whatever day you watch this, maybe mm -hmm. it's not Monday. If it's Tuesday, Wednesday night, you can still set the line of discipline for the rest of the week. Uh, uh, at that moment, at any given moment. But that's why people feel so. Blast and all these things, right? I'm getting, don't get too religious, but I feel it when I wake up every morning. It's like, yeah, yeah, we're still here. I should be, dead. <laughs> yeah, I know, I should be dead. Oh, I used like jujitsu saved your life, yeah. Fitness and you know, getting deeper and deeper in that martial arts definitely saved my life. But the drinking just was getting me so crazy and just so out of hand. Like I should be dead. Like the with the cop thing, and that's why like it's oh, so sure. it's so like oh, it's kind of touchy for me because sometimes people need to probably get their ass whooped by the police, but yeah. sometimes they don't deserve it. No, I no. definitely should have been killed a few years ago because I was tasered multiple times in one sitting. How Damn. bad? Crazy. How did, so I never knew enough about to that. be no, unconscious. So, so I mean, in so, those moments, those police officers had enough training to be like this dude. Just tase him again. <laughs> tase him again. Tase Man. him again. All right, now restrain him. He's asleep. All right, get him out of here. They didn't sh kill me. But when the guy's reading the police report in the police station, when I'm still like kind of waking up and like, what the hell's going on? He's yeah. like, he looked at me, he's like, dude, 
They could have shot you. Like, uh, holy shit. Well, I mean, but that's why it's so crazy. So, and then I'm like, dude, uh, and, every day. You know, like most times, the the dude doesn't get shot. Like the, because the times yes. like on you see that they do, but like not for real. You were lucky. <laughs> for real lucky though. For real. Because you know, like what was the the thing that happened at Fruitville a Fruit a couple years ago? That guy like he mistaken it. Oscar he Grant. said he, he, that was my Bart station. That was, uh, was like around Grant. the corner from it. Yeah. What Crazy. was it, uh, what was his name? Office Oscar, Oscar Grant. Oscar Grant. Johannes Meserly, right? Oh, I oh the, the cop. Yeah. Was the cop. Yeah. Because that was like I used to watch KTVU with uh, Gassa, Gassia Gassia Alien and fucking whatever. I would watch KTVU oh, yeah, yeah. every morning. KTVU, that was my thing. I'd watch it every morning before going to work, and that was the story for like two years. Yeah. And even the acquittal, everything he got out for time served early. You know, it, it, he didn't get the charge they thought he did. But at the same time, it's like, yeah, I mean, who knows? You, you see so many of these times where, you know, the, the guy does get shot, and something, a lot of times they don't, but shit, I don't know. You, you, I've, I've seen a bunch of stuff online where people just get shot and it's like dude that was avoidable crazy right need better training they do but is, it, is it totally racism i don't know yeah. and we're uh, kind of on a tangent now but no, i feel no, like it's there's, there's, i don't know if it's be, if it's racism or if it's better training but definitely better training dude, it's like I, dude come on there's got to be a better so way to make a decision the friends that i have that are in police departments do go out there and seek out training and they get it they, they did even the gracie academy and stuff they went to socal That's and got cool. training and they're injured so these guys are already in jujitsu they already know what's up like they already know how to do handle the the hand to hand stuff. They have the wherewithal. Of, like they know when to escalate and when not to, and that's 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 awesome. But I mean, yeah, they they there is more training that's needed for all of them across the board. Like the entire way that people are dealt with and fucking legal systems fucked up anyway. But yeah, it's a, it is my dad. But my dad always says that's why he always says that to stay away from those types of places to begin with. And going back to jujitsu. Will keep you out of trouble. Yeah. That's right. Keep me out of like you know going to the bars or whatever. And, oh. and in all honesty, like not having that chip on your shoulder, right? That's something because obviously I I came from like a Taekwondo Muay Thai background. I did these things for years, you know Taekwondo especially, and then I transitioned to like Muay Thai and boxing. And before I, I started even learning to grapple because I had zero ground game. Um, but you know w when you have that identity, I just feel like you have less of a chip on your shoulder. You know what I mean? The professional fighters seldomly are the ones who are just going around like looking for fights, right? They're they don't want to get into a street fight. They want to go home to their families. Yep, you know, they don't have chill. something to prove. They get paid to fight. Though. Yeah. That's the thing. It's like I'm not. I don't get get paid to fight you in the bar. You're no. trying to fight me to look cool. Yeah, exactly. Like, I'm and cool, bro. The reason why I started on that is because you know a lot of times guys get in a bar fight. Somebody gets arrested. You know, they're getting hostile with the police, and then you know it, it can escalate or yeah, whatever. Yeah, all bad. Yeah, yeah. Your identity, man. You stay away from that stuff. Like, man, I just listen. I want to go train and just go home to my yeah. family and you eat know what something I mean? and chill trouble. out. Yeah, Burn it and kick back. Mm -hmm. I, I just, I think it's not a matter of acting like you don't give a fuck. It's just not actually giving a fuck. So going out and I, I'm undefeated to bar fights. I don't get in them. I, <laughs> there you go. Yeah. I don't put myself in that situation. I, just, I I'm, I, I don't want to be out there. That's, that's not the company I'm trying to keep. I'm, I, I don't want to be fucked up in public. I, I, I want to know that I can go back to my spot where everything, yeah, you know, that's just because you don't look for it doesn't mean it won't come to you. And, and at which point, you hope you do the right shit. You hope you have your wits without, you know, but nobody's undefeated in life. Sometimes you take a beat and hopefully I, you know, I'm, I'm in a good spot to, to not, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But if you get tapped on the chin the wrong way, I don't give a fuck how big you are. Yeah. You're gonna, you, you, that's you're it. Gonna go. It's red, you, you drop. And yeah. so you try to mitigate that risk by not putting yourself in these fucking situations. And hopefully it works out for the best. You got all the training you have, but don't fucking fool yourself that jujitsu is going to save your life. You know, if you got two, three guys on you, you might arm drag one or two and get a choke in, but you start getting steel toe boots to the head. Like you're still done. You're still yeah, fucking done, so behave totally. yourself regardless. Be <laughs> respectful, and if you see you're outnumbered, it's time to bounce. Technical stand up and move. Yeah, mm -hmm. always one, avoid one more hip escape costs. to the left to the at the fucking door. Yeah. You don't want to be in that situation. And we all have this issue with ego. I know I struggle with it a lot, right? If you look at someone, like, especially if they size you up, they flip you off, they talk to your girl, whatever the case may be, right? You kind of want to show yourself and kind of put them in their place. But, like, this is something that I have to remind myself all the time. A, is it worth it? B, you know what I mean? If, like, what are the what are the uh, repercussions? What are the consequences of, of 
you know what's going to happen if you get into this fight you know what i mean just yeah it, it's never worth it it and never is unforeseen even Most though you're like i ain't gonna go out like no bitch like, i don't want to walk away from him i want to show him blah blah, blah. no go. you're gonna go home and the next day you're gonna pat yourself on the back like you know what i'm so fortunate that i woke up in my you know uh, posturepedic yeah. bed and, and not, not a jail cell a jail. <laughs> those consequences you know, are unforeseen and you're like what i'm gonna go tell him what's up no. I'm gonna go fight this guy. Like, it's always dude. an ego. All right, man. We, we all as male. My go to jail. testosterone. We all struggle from it. Don't Some more than jail. others, obviously. But um, I'm pretty secure in my shit, man. If I if I absolutely have to do something, then well, that's yeah, one and then thing, that's but, the last. That's the yeah. Absolute, but it's, it's for for it to be absolutely necessity, you know, necessity or whatever, absolute necessity. I, I try to be pretty pragmatic about it. Man. I had a street fight with a bum one time. <laughs> Was it Hawaii? Downtown Lake Tahoe. Really? really in the snow what like right on on, on a state right. line right there right, scoot, right, scoot in, the, right, there. I want you to, right in the middle because yes, that please. guy is i'm telling you sometimes you don't have to be looking for it sometimes it just fights. finds you dude you. it was definitely like a bum fight i thought we were cool at first <laughs> right because we were like both just kind of slightly inebriated on the street so <laughs> we were kind of laughing at the passerbyers she was kicking over a homeless dude in the tr- Well, the I didn't know he was homeless at first. And we were, like, throwing snowballs across the street. Uh, you know how the, some of those hotels, the Harvey and Harris, like, right side by side? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. It was at one of the marquees. It was, like, it was just fun for a second. And then, for some reason, it was time to move on. And he started to leave. And he had, like, this little bag with the extended handle and the wheels on the suitcase right so like oh, oh the airport luggage he had a carry-on suitcase cool yeah <laughs> so where are you going bro and yeah. he was like he got mad at me he's like dude shut up man wait don't be talking trash and i was like i know i didn't say anything but i just asked where you're going <laughs> yeah so i I, it slowly escalated from there and of course i was just kind of drunk so i maybe had egged it on a slight bit mm-hmm. But I just honestly was asking him a question. Yeah. And I I guess he was homeless. Mm. And we had a fight right there in downtown Tahoe, Damn. man. It was crazy. We were throwing fists. How long ago was this? This was a few years ago. Whoa. This was a few years ago. This is probably like yeah. two, shit, 2010. <laughs> That's super 2009. Man. The Baker. Dude, people, it's crazy, I, I, man. I ain't judging. You, you won though, right? Oh, well, yeah, I had to wrestle him a little bit. Oh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. I wrestled him down, kind of hold him down. Mm-hmm. I could see you like, shooting a high oh, crotch. So and this <laughs> was, was kind of getting me to think about that when you said about the, the consequence thing. Yeah. Because the, the dude, wait, he's like pulling a knife or something. Oh, God. Dude, exactly. one, dude yeah. I, I honestly, I feel like I don't think he had one. But in those moments, while I was like kind of wrestling him down, I tried not to get like chest on chest with this fool because I didn't want him to start sticking yeah. me. You know, I had to like, it was weird. He was like kind of swinging on me, dude. And I was kind of drunk too. So we were kind of just all over each other. Mm-hmm. But I was like, this is really happening right now, yeah. you know? So I like, dude, just kind of stay away. And the snow helped me out. Just kind of slip a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah. Dude, okay, cool. Kind of stay down now. And then like, this fool might just pull a knife on me or something, man. Yeah. I'm out of here. Exactly. He, that was crazy, dude. I'm telling you. That's why you <laughs> don't have to be wanting to look for it. Or you could be wanting to keep your nose clean. Oh, yeah. It will still come for you, man. So, um, Nima, have you beat up any homeless people lately? Uh, no, not lately. <laughs> not lately. I fear hepatitis C. No, I'm just... <laughs> dude. No, no, no. But, hey, so you guys, speaking Sorry, of dude. fights, <laughs> speaking of fights, gentlemen... <laughs> UFC 217. I'm really excited about this card. When is I'm that? I'm geeking out about this. This is November 4th, the same weekend as US Open. I'm going to be in Vegas for my brother's 30th oh, birthday. I can't do it. Oh, Unfortunately, yeah, that's why I can't that. compete because it's my brother's birthday and obviously, you know, family. Um, but I'm very excited about this card, you guys. You got TJ Dillashaw fighting Cody Garbrandt. That is no love. You He's got coming GSP I got coming w back. Right there. Yeah. Dillashaw going GSP down. GSP coming back, uh, Who fighting wants Bisping. Some? Who wants some? You got Rose Nama Yunes fighting uh, Joanna Yonjacek for the title. He just pronounced some names right there. That, you know what I'm I saying? Say I, he I, practiced those. I know Johanna though. That's That's the, the, everybody calls you Johanna uh, Johanna Champion. I can pronounce you on yeah. Jacek, but oh. don't ask me to spell it because even if my life depended on it, I couldn't spell that. I heard they they don't, be, those Polish people, I don't know for some reason, they don't believe in the vowels. Say, say <laughs> Khabib's last name. Uh, Normegomedov. Normegomedov. I kind of, I butchered it a little bit. Normegomedov. Jorge Masvidal's fighting as well. That's a great card, you guys. So let me ask you, Clinton, please start first, Mr. Host. Uh, Cody Garbrandt, TJ Dillashaw, who do you got? 
So that's a long time in the making, right? These are ex-teammates, mm -hmm. right? Going long hatred. way back. Yeah. Uh, probably not. By the hatred. time it's over with, it, it, it hates shit talk, right? <sighs> Man. No love's on a tear. Yeah, I got I got no love, too. Uh, but I'm not saying TJ can't pull it off. TJ is mm -hmm. talented as a motherfucker. Yeah, he is. But I'm saying Cody's probably got his number. I, I don't think he's going to walk through him. It's going to no, be a it's fight. Gonna, it's going to be gonna fun. Be, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to be fun, but yeah. Cody hits hard. There will be a finish, yeah. though. Cody finish, not going to decision. No, Cody hits hard, but TJ's yeah. fast. And TJ's got mm -hmm. some pretty fucking great wrestling on him, man. So it's, it's going to be fun. Going That's going to be a fun fight. It, it, but it, it could be, I'd say, round three. Here's my take. I hope, you guys I hope we get three rounds out of it. Yeah, that would be great because we want a good fight. I mean, uh, TJ has that amazing Muay Thai, right? He has those feints and he creates those angles. Uh, he's a great striker and obviously, you know, a um, great wrestler from CSU Fullerton. But see, you have guys like Justin Buckholtz, right, who's the team alpha male coach. This guy trained TJ for years. So the fact that TJ went out to Colorado and now he's training down in SoCal with Cup Swanson and them, I'm, I'm sure Buckholtz has like, Books on books of, you know, info, info on TJ, which will help Cody a lot in that fight, right? And I think Cody's bigger as well. Um, the guy has great boxing. I mean, you saw the way – the fight between TJ and Dominic Cruz was super close, razor thin in my opinion. But I saw the way Cody outclassed Dominic Cruz, and so that's my reason why I got Cody. I don't think he's going to walk all over him, but I think he's going to slide this one out. Dude, he, it's going to be good. Yeah. What about GSP and Michael Brisbane? Man. That's going to be so interesting. I am so I, interested I got to see it. Really? I'm not a huge fan of Bisping. I'm a huge Luke Rockhold fan, my favorite fighter. <sighs> um, so I don't got much love for Bisping. But that being said, I thought GSP lost the fight against Hendrix right before he retired. I thought Hendrix won that one and he got robbed. And this guy's been on the shelf, you know. And I mean, granted, Bisping ain't no spring chicken. But he's been, you know, training day in and day out. I'm a huge fan of his boxing coach, Jason Perillo, down at uh, the Ruka down in Orange County. So, I mean, you know, these are just random bets. But I, I say Bisping squeaks so as well. Bisping Damn. is a larger person yeah. that he – that's true. He, GSP's he, coming up in size. You're right. He yeah. is. Um, athleticism. GS, like So GSP in his prime, I wouldn't even be talking to you about this. We'd, we'd be right. talking about something much more interesting. <laughs> yeah, but for that sure. He, that he did. I mean, Anderson, after he was already sort of past his prime, that he that he won that. I still wasn't that convinced that he did. Um, D D Hendo beat him last fight. Mm -hmm. Hendo, uh, he just did. Can, yeah, agree. Can, it, it depends which GSP we see. If we see like GSP tuned up, ready to go, then no, it's 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 not going to be much fun for Michael Bisping. But going home for that long and coming back, especially against a larger guy, I see Michael Bisping as a guy that's just was able to weather the storm of just like two generations of just fucking athletes. Um, yeah. But his record was never too shabby, man. He was always one fight away from that title picture, even though he, he wasn't always in the main event picture. He was always – he hasn't lost that many fights and not against yeah. too many really high high rate. But he's just – he's a grinder. Yeah, he's he a gr is. He's, just, he's weathered the storm and he somehow has the title still. And respect for that, for sticking around and actually fighting through this stuff. Can he beat GSP? He's going to be the guy that, that was somehow was able to beat GSP and fucking Anderson Silva. Michael Bisping, if you would have told me that back in, what, 2007, I'd have told you you're on fucking crack. <laughs> yeah. Like, no, there's no way. There's no way at all. Him? No. Like, And people don't like him because of the accent or they don't like the attitude or whatever. The guy's a grinder. He's stuck through the whole thing. He's got the belt now. He outlasted all of his contemporaries, all of his peers, if there was a time in either of their careers where he could beat George St. Pierre, it's right fucking now. But then again, if, if GSP comes out, fucking... Dude, I feel like GSP is going to try to come out right Yeah, now. you guys are right. What He's type been, of GSP are we going to get? That's the yeah. right determining question. If you, if you yeah. get OG like in his prime like with crazy-ass... Fucking hi hips like and wrestling that don't even make sense. Running out in that gi. And the <laughs> but you feel like he's been training. I feel like he's been he's hungry. Yeah, hey, don't don't. I mean, I, I'm saying all these things about Bisping, but you guys are right. I mean, don't sleep on TriStar. For us, Sahabi is an amazing freaking coach. That guy is world renowned. He's one of the greatest fucking fighters in the history of fighting. Mm -hmm. GSP fight is a legend. 
GSP is a legend, just, and he did not suffer those losses like Anderson did. So his confidence isn't in the. He, nope. he wasn't coming out it there. It wasn't after, like a traumatic injury no. or like you know. No, not after getting embarrassed and then having his fucking foot, his, his leg broken from kicking a guy. Explode! But Anderson before that, so that hit the confidence on him was insane, mm. and GSP didn't suffer that. GSP took his time. He backed off. He tr mm. whatever he did. Saw some aliens. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that that's weird. <laughs> hey, they might have given him powers. Who knows? Yeah, that's that's why sometimes I'm wondering if it's the whole uh, the CTE Ayahuasca. or like those uh, you know those those uh, strikes to the head. I don't know. DMT, <laughs> dimethyltryptamine. <laughs> By the way, so when do you guys think that Anderson started slipping off? Do you think it was that first Weidman fight when he started kind of playing around and Weidman just clipped he him? He got knocked out on TV after not losing a fight in years and being yeah. the most dominant guy and everyone saying he's the greatest fighter of all time and then he lost. Mm. Then he lost again. Wow. Then he, he broke the rocked. foot, right? Like you well, said. You know, yeah. that was, it was traumatic as fuck and he lost the same guy twice. Yeah. And this is a guy that beat everyone and most, he, he looked at Forrest Griffin, he basically looked at him and he fucking dropped. Yeah. Like that's, that's how much swag Anderson Silva's game had at the time. He just broke. he was yeah. fucking with people, and then you had this young Chris Weidman come up from Long Island, and be like, "Fuck this guy," and just dude, I love him. Anderson Silva. Just touched him, just just a full because he was playing games. He was doing Muhammad yeah. Ali yep. shows, whatever. And then he, he was Anderson Silva's favorite fire, best of all time. I wish I could fight him. I was and just when, about to ask you guys: was, Do you uh, call GSP as the goat or Anderson Silva? Anderson Silva is my favorite, big Silva. greatest of all time. Between those Silva. two, yeah, Silva. For Silva, sure. Too, Silva. too spectacular. Too unorthodox. Too just, Silva. like, what's it going to be? Yeah. I'd say. You're right. Silva. I'd say that, actually. And then if McGregor keeps it up, McGregor. Yeah. Because the problem, really GSP good. had put on some awesome performances. Mm hmm yeah, but the finishes were like there was a lot. There was he, he was criticized a lot for the lay and pray stuff. Mm -hmm. I always thought just watching his wrestling and watching like just the technical mastery of his ability to wrestle, even though he wasn't a wrestler, and his guard pass, even though he really wasn't a jiu-jitsu guy, he could just step over and pass guard was just, cr and it looked like he was just stepping over your leg, and it's no uh -huh. big deal. But yeah, his, his, so effortless. Yeah, his, his dexterity, his hip pressure, it was crazy, and he, he wasn't a jiu-jitsu guy, he wasn't a fucking wrestler guy, but Dude. he just did it better than everybody else. I remember one of my like the the two biggest moments of Anderson Silva for me was that one time when he front kicked Vito, Vitor Belfort in the that face. That was crazy. Bikuda na fusa. Yeah, and that freaking like last round submission against Chael Sonnen when Chael Sonnen was just dominating him at the end. He came back, baby. Chael whooped that Jiu Jitsu ass. for the win. <laughs> for, he whooped that ass for five rounds, twenty three minutes yeah. straight, and he gets a triangle to armbar. I taps. still say he let him do that. Because yeah. the round, the fight previous to that, he fought Damian Maya. Oh, but he's allergic to triangles, though. <laughs> and so also what Damian Maya is allergic to is being goaded on, if I can put use that in this context. Mm -hmm. You know, he didn't fall for the he didn't fall for the the emotional hook that anderson silva gets you on like yeah come on come on come on oh yeah you know how he like taunting you he, yeah. damian maya didn't fall for it and anderson silva looked like a huge douche dude that was such a weird fight to watch it was like oh man people paid for this i felt bad yeah uh, and then the but next so fight it was chael sonnen i feel like and that's why he kind of let chael sonnen beat him up a little bit and let people see him take some adversity and, uh, you know, deal with some adversity, take some shots. He took quite a few shots, and though. put that shit on. And he got, like, at, at command. But he was getting dumped. He was just getting taken down and pounded. Until I feel like he let him do that. He let him do that just to be like, okay, fine. You saw how I did the last fight, and I was way out of the line. I'm sorry. I will humble myself now. I'm just going to let this foot. Yeah, I think he really. But in that second fight, he just need him right in the sternum. And oh, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> That Muay Thai, baby. It's what he did with um, what's his name? He had the fight right before that. We he had he had a couple two hundred five fights. He had Forrest Griffin, then he had Stefan Bonner, and he did the same. He had a similar thing where he just like murked Stefan Bonner quick. Dude. It might not have been Damian Maya and um, Chael Sonnen back to back, but it was something because Chael Sonnen he I feel like he took the punishment. He he let critics see him take it because in the fight previous to or like the one you know the live previous one or two before mm -hmm. he was being a total jerk. <laughs> and trying to call him out because that's how he does to yeah, get but, you out of your shell. But he did he it with overreacting. He rocks you. He was getting touched already by Chris Weidman, and he started like because 
technique for technique, he was getting touched. It wasn't yeah. bad, but he got hit a couple times before that main hit. And then he started playing games. And that's when he down. likes that. So he's like, oh, cool. Come on. You're, you're game two. Let's go. And I'm cool. Man, Chris Weidman, though, he took the who? I was uh, shocked. What, what about he got his skull split by Ooh, what's his name? Yoel Romero. Yoel Romero. That was an MSG, too. I felt bad for the no guy. It was the first Jesus, MSG man. fight. Don't no forget crazy. Jesus. Yeah, New York guy, you know, going fighting in front of the home crowd. I felt for bad for him. He's Long Island, though. That's not the same thing. Oh, yeah, that's true. MSG's in Manhattan. Remember that? Penn State. <laughs> it's, it's Penn Station. He's probably, he's probably a Mexican. York. No, I'm playing. No, I, I, I like Chris Weidman a lot. Um, Man, I love New York. That yeah, was I like, was just going to ask, so if you go to New York for five days, what's the lineup? What which, you, what's the five days looking like? When? When would you go? Because Let's say just uh, as it's stopping with the disgusting heat. <laughs> Dude, honestly, New York City is magic in the fucking winter, man. Like, it's the, it the, the, that Thanksgiving Day parade. Uh, uh, you got New Year's Eve, which is a shit show. It's a lot of people, but it's... it's and then the Christmas, you go to... Rockefeller go, Center. Rockefeller Center. You go to the yeah. ice skating thing. You go see Holiday the tree. Holiday season's yeah. the best. You go to the... Thir- the thir- you know, Miracle on 34th Street, the Macy's right there. That's, that's supposed to be like the real Santa Claus or whatever, you know? So uh, maybe sometime in between... Between Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving and, and Christmas. Christmas, that's magic in New York City. That's where you start seeing like, oh yeah, it's just you, you go out there with the family, you still have fun. Five yeah. days. So, so what's the lineup look like? Mm, Henzo, I'd, I'd I'd go, dude. Henzo, Gracie, well, so, Marcelo, Grace, uh, for Marcelo sure. Garcia, too. Dude, they're all there, in the right? same neighborhood though. They're like they're like right uh, by the Chelsea. So I was just uh, there last week, right? Mm. Fuck. Here's how cool Henzo is. Motherfucker remembered me. Wow. Walked that's in, he's awesome, like, man, dude. you are far from home. <laughs> He yeah. just he just got back from um, the uh, what was it the ADCCs uh, where uh, Gordon Ryan won right nice. and he, they just got back he had him and some of his students Dude, didn't they have like seven students competing at ADCC it, it was crazy yeah Gary Tonin yeah Jake Shields and I'm sure you know, but they had Nogi I think Pan Ams or something right in New yeah. York like right after that shit wow. so he was already back in town a couple days later um, I was just going by I was seeing if there was a class but. I missed it by like twenty minutes or so. Ah, fuck it. Um, I was I was running around like a crazy person. Um, I was in New York for about a week. I want to go there, man. Um, that's that that's that's it's like hometown, like Jersey, sort of New York City for me. But like I've been here so long now, so like calling anything home yeah. is weird. So um, I've never been to New York. I want to see it. New York is awesome. It's man. cool. Yeah. Um, I I can give you some places like where to go and all that's like. Henzo's is right there. It looks small from the outside because real like real estate, uh, those storefronts in New York City are very expensive. The biggest part of the gym is under it, so it's like this big, uh, big gym, but it's like the basement. Tight. So it's cool though. It's very, very cool. cool. You go in there and you got Donna. Her, you got the whole. Thing. You walk around. You're like, oh, this dude, me. that guy's super smart. I follow him on Instagram. Oh, yeah. The way he breaks things down, he's like a professor. Shout out to John Donner. Oh, John Donner's man. Yeah, he's the man. Uh, there's Marcelo Garcia, right? And then there's that other gym. I think it's in Brooklyn. And uh, Sheldon, fellow Sheldon, Vitor Sheldon. It's it, it's right. It, it, the, none of them are very far apart. What about where, where Matt Young, our fellow One World guy, he trains out of a gym there? Is Sheldon. Is that the one? I I thought I thought, I thought I, it started with an F. I may be wrong, but yeah. No, it's a... I'm oh. trying. To I'll look it up later. Yeah. What was it? But there's a there, there's a few others. Flavio that... or something. Mm. I remember I was talking to Mike about it. Where does Wyman train? He trains in Baldwin with Matt Sarah. I don't know where Baldwin is. I just see it fighting out of Baldwin, New York. <laughs> uh, but yeah, with uh, Matt Sarah's gym with Ray Longo and uh, Matt yeah. Sarah. Okay. So if you're in like if you're right in Manhattan, you'd be pretty close to 42nd. You'd be pretty close to 34th. All like everything you're pretty much gonna do. You're not gonna be in Queens if you're there. Like you're probably gonna be in Manhattan. Manhattan. Yeah. You're going to be in Manhattan, right? So yeah, just just Henzo's is right there. And so if you're in the middle, so the Chelsea is sort of the middle place beats, which is you're probably not going to be hanging out there too much, but that's the middle place between, say, Henzo's and the Marcelo Garcia's. Oh, okay. So that's that's uh, where I, I just was. They, that's where they booked us and stuff. So we had a, the, the, the house right there. Oh, by the way, that was a very, very nice house. Let's yeah. call it what it was. It was like a penthouse. No, that was, <laughs> that, that wasn't a penthouse. It was a mansion. It was, was like a... That was 4,500 square feet, yeah. five stories, fucking with a roof terrace and an elevator. Yeah. Pimping. It was ne- it was, next to, it, was ne- it was crazy. It was next to Twitter headquarters. So you, you go out on the roof. We had a bigger roof than they did. That's, wow. that's all of Twitter. And there's like five of us. It was insane. Yeah, so nice. Facetime me with that man. That yeah. was so nice. It, so man, I, I, I saw all these stairs. It was like five sets of stairs. I'm like, fuck, dude, I don't have bags. Then I, I looked in front of me. I'm like, nah. 
boom, there's an elevator in it. Damn right. Got hooked up. Got uh, that, I was very fortunate. Got very lucky for that. I didn't pay for that. Dude, I'd be doing cartwheels in that place if I if I had that was a place a, in Manhattan like that, that for was a, a week. It was an eleven million dollar house. Jeez, it, it was insane. It was just yeah. Beep. Uh, I don't know. I'm just going upstairs. I'd be like forty five hundred square feet. Dude, let me throw some mats on the hands. Are you come to my place to train? I, 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 I got. Well, because you could have. You could have on the roof. There was plenty wow. of space to train up there. Plenty. Dude, it's so dope. Get those little like puzzle piece mats or whatever that the, the interlocking like you know <laughs> put those down and it doesn't it doesn't sound like the price to whatever it doesn't but this was midtown manhattan and like the real nice area that made no sense at all like i got hooked up it's it, like 11 it, mil or probably ju- just kidding but it, dude this is this is just the hookups this is, this is it's insane like uh, yesterday i was at uh punk and drublick tour mm. totally different scene but um, Mark Wolf from Gorilla Jiu Jitsu, mm. he grew up with the guys from that band Goldfinger, which is like the first concert I ever saw live. So it was Goldfinger, um, oh, the fuck else was it? No Effects, uh, Flogging Molly, and just Less Than Jake. Huh. And they're, here's your backstage pass slash guest list shit. Just walk right up, be like, here's my ID. And they're like, you're on the list. <laughs> that was in the city, right? He just made the list. No, it was in it's Sacramento. Was it was in oh. Sac. So uh, in, in the city on Saturday, I went and saw Gilbert Gottfried. And then Sunday, I went to Punk and Draw Book, and it was like, I got to meet Gilbert Gottfried. I made him laugh. It was funny. Oh, no, yeah. Funny. He's all screaming still. Oh, dude, he's the same thing. He's, he's, so he's, sort of, he, he's, like, he's like singing in Hebrew. He's like, he's like, sing along if you know the words. <laughs> he's like singing like from the Torah and shit. So funny. Yeah. Dude, he's fucking amazing. But no, nah, man, it's like I wouldn't have I wouldn't have any of this hookup, any of these like connections if it wasn't for jujitsu. Like you do jujitsu long enough, you meet fucking everybody that's attached to it. And like Anthony Bourdain does mm-hmm. fucking jujitsu. And look at like I uh, the, the the one podcast the one we did from uh, Kurt Ossiander's place. We wound up using the tripod from the, Anthony Bourdain left it at his house. I'm like, man, it's like it's one degree of separation. But yeah. Like, if you go through the Clint Cronin show, which you should be subscribing to if you're watching this, why wouldn't you? I mean, that's a no-brainer. Just look at the fucking people I've been, had on there. Mm. This is it's insane. <laughs> They're like, it's like legends. It's tremendous. New subscriber. That's what I call it the life optimizing podcast. I mean, it is. MMA, you can talk life, you know, local, what's going on locally. It's This is the best. Harley Mendez just subscribed to the Here channel. Boom, it worked. <laughs> so subscribe, hit here or Apple Podcast is great too. If you, yeah. want, if, if you just want audio, it's not that yeah. pretty to look at. So if you just want to hear us on your way to work, we've got your hookup. Life optimizing shit like Nima Meridi, the Ninja Realtor said, like Anthony Baker, the Omni Physical Solutions guy said, we're here to make your life mm-hmm. better. Jiu-Jitsu made my life better. It saved my life. I would have died. Not just like, no, 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 no. Yeah. I almost died. Like, Organ failure shit. And if I wasn't training, my blood sugar wouldn't have went true. I don't have type 2 diabetes. I'm not, I, I didn't do that with my diet. I got the heredity one, autoimmune, the whole shit. <laughs> Terrible. Gotta take insulin. But if I wasn't training, I went undiagnosed for three months. I had no idea what was up, but I knew I had to be at class. I had to teach. Mm-hmm. I had to make sure those people that were paying, that depended on me, that, that they, they knew that I would be there to teach. Cause that's, that's what you do. That's what it is. You show up. And you make sure that these guys are taken care of. Reliability. You're reliable, mm-hmm. right? Because you you know you know follow what I'm doing, not what I'm saying, or follow fucking both. But really, people are going to look at what you do, your behaviors, right? Yeah, and it's not just jujitsu. I mean, you've talked about jujitsu. You've had motivational speakers on, right? I mean, Justin Wren, granted, you know, Bellator uh, heavyweight MMA fighter, but what he does in, in uh, with the pygmy population in africa i mean you know so it's just crazy inspiring uh, you just start realizing like how small your problems are and that's honestly the whole hashtag first world problems we complain so much about like this congestion right i mean for example with me when i'm when i'm driving home clinton granted your commute is so much shorter than mine to the gym <laughs> <laughs> around the corner you know that's but deliberate though you guys at 8 p.m there's still bumper to bumper traffic these days you know on 280 south and I'm, I live like near Communication Hill, so yeah. It's, it, 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 sometimes it still takes me forty five minutes to get home, even even though I leave the gym at eight o'clock. But that goes back. That's why y'all got to get on that podcast tip. Who, I mean, who has time for commercials anyway? Before I got on the, into podcasts, I used to listen to a ton of KNBR sports radio because I'm a big sports guy, you know. But man, like I learned so commercial much more, and my commute gets so much better. Yeah. yeah, so much better. So y'all need to subscribe to that. Subscribe, man. It's rule of thirds, right? So I, I, like, it's like with your friends back in the day. You can't just say like, nah, man, I'm cutting my family and my friends out. Like, even if it's like a little negative, you know, whatever, you got to keep in perspective. Yeah. Rule of thirds. Don't forget where you came from. 
Then in the middle part, it's like people that are around your same level, like trying to reach for goals just like you are, like the people that are like-minded. That's the second third. The third third, you you need mentors in your life. You need people that have already been there and done that because be, by being able to look at what they've done, so your goals, if they've already accomplished that and them some, by looking at them, you're like, dude, it's not just a dream. If I look at what they did, I go step one, step two, step three, and it's real. So having things in perspective, that rule of thirds, it ain't just photography. It's it's how you spend your time with me when I listen to the radio, when I listen to whatever I listen to. Music's part of it. You got to get that flow going. I want to laugh, but I need to learn something too. So, so I, I split it between educational, entertainment, right? Mm -hmm. And then just fucking... That's smart. Yeah, because I mean, sometimes, you know, you're, you're driving home, it's late, or you're like, you know, you're on a trip, and you're, you're trying to be productive, but you start getting tired. Yeah, of course, sometimes people switch it to music. But my dad, I, I keep talking about my dad. It's, <laughs> but uh, he always told me when the wheels are turning, you better be learned. And with his accent, like, I never forget that. He always thought of the car as an audible university, uh, a university on wheels. And growing up, he always had those books on tape, you know, I grew around salespeople my whole life. So yeah, I still do it. You know, yeah, it's, it's awesome. so smart audible man it's the way with the I, and, your, and your podcast you and i were talking I'm, about this yesterday i'm not a salesman but i've listened to all the zig ziglar shit yeah. i've listened to all the tony robbins stuff anything where you're like uh you know just being seven habits for highly successful individuals high, yeah. uh, highly successful people the four hour work week mm -hmm. i put this on my wish list by the way that's, you that's that a gorilla jiu-jitsu guy right there tim ferris tim ferris he's from gorilla jiu-jitsu if you listen oh Read the book or listen to the – it's on Audible. It's on YouTube. You probably ain't supposed to listen to YouTube. I'm yeah. signing for free. I mean, it's all good. But he talks about Dave Camarillo in there. He talks about his life, his backstory, like pre-Gorilla. You get to hear about how he was working at HP for years Crazy. and how he had this this girl he wanted to you know be with that was in Asia and went over there and courted her the whole deal, and now they're together and the whole thing. So this is when he was still a tech guy. Damn. When he was thinking about doing jujitsu full time, but he just wanted to be able to work from home sometimes to be able to maximize his investment into his his greater livelihood, right? Mm -hmm. And now look at Dave. Dave's yeah. world. He's known worldwide. The U.S. military has him highly regarded as somebody they go to for ground training, hand to hand combat training. He's gone all over the world. He's been to Fallujah. He's been to fucking all kinds wow. of places. Dave's a He's part of it. And you see him on TV, Ultimate Fire. He's trained Kane. He's trained. Do, 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 do. Who hasn't he trained? All the AKA guys he trained. And he's still doing jiu jitsu. He does seminars all over the world. He started with Tim Ferriss. You know, he, yeah. Tim Ferriss is one of his students. So that four hour work week stuff's real. So, like, maybe you're not going to, you know, go follow the formula exactly it's not going to happen overnight either but you might but you might pick up a habit or two from that one from one of these other books you got to figure out like what how am i spending my time is game of thrones really going to fix my life <laughs> so, yeah as I mean, entertaining as it is right but rule, still rule it's thirds. not gonna yeah frame, way, you gotta frame your life man rule of thirds it's cool you have to be entertained don't be a joyless adult that shit sucks why even yeah. be here you know what I mean? You got to get in that flow state. The music's good, but you got to learn shit too. Expand your horizons, yo. Don't forget where you came from. Mm -hmm. Be around people that are on your same level, but then, you know, you want to be able to rise above and seek those mentors out and be like, how did you do it? You know, you don't let your pride get in your way. You have to be able to look at somebody. You have to have someone in your life that has been there, done that. You can actually, and if you don't have it, find it. Seek it out. Find it. Be ready to absorb information and learn something. Yeah, and so, like respect. Turn the ego down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> respect people older than you. Hey, hey, I think we'll have to wrap this up, man. Yeah, we've been at 4 it for 4.30 a.m. comes very early. <laughs> we got man, a, We got another subscriber. Early. Yeah, that's I appreciate awesome. it. Thank you for watching. Thanks Thank you for, for being with us. Um, quick shout outs. Uh, Nima Meridi, the Ninja Realtor, Intero San Jose, Al Meridi team. If you're looking at a house in the Bay Area, look no further. He's got you, uh, a.k.a. Sunnyvale, One World Jiu-Jitsu, Anthony Baker. Omni Physical Solutions, The mm -hmm. Anthony Baker Show on Instagram. You guys can find me at Insta Names. That's I-N-S-T-A-N-I-M-Z. Or you can uh, look me up on Facebook.com slash Mariti Realty. Or just look me up by my name. Either way. <laughs> And if you want to follow me, I'm at Clint Cronin, uh, C-L-I-N-T-C-R-O-N-I-N. -I -I Please subscribe to the Clint Cronin Show on Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, anywhere podcasts or uh, high-quality uh, digital audio can be found. Uh, 
be, be sure and give a shout out and uh, go check out Want versus Need. They're a Bay Area, uh, you know, ba- uh, brand that does geese. They 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 do uh, you know lifestyle type stuff. They they do shirts. They do rash guards. Uh, their stuff fits awesome. It, it, it's it's uh, really- it's such. Uh, high quality material too. I got yeah. my stuff in the rash guard and the fight shorts. Oh, it's beautiful. The, the shorts amazing. are nice, right? Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, and I love the back, the the um, the design on the back too. And you guys missed out on this one, but um, they're a real brand. So what they just did was uh, a, a a breast cancer sort of uh, related gi. It's meant to basically uh, give the money back to a local charity called Beats for Boobs. Um, it's, it's for breast cancer awareness month. It's pink and white. You know, my logo is already kind of that pink color anyway. So it's for me, it's no, no thing, but definitely support that. Fuck sugar. Um, yep. you know, take that out of your diet right now. It's an epidemic in this country. I'm a diabetic and, uh, on November 5th at us open, if you are in the bracket, super heavyweight black belt division, master one, and then open weight, you're going to lose to it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah pretty, I'm getting double gold and that's it. For sure, um, HK uh, marketing and consulting for real estate marketing consulting stuff. Uh, go there, um, reliable, honest, and uh, awesome stuff for anybody with real estate marketing needs. And also Bronze Humanity. Uh, if you uh, if you're really pale like me and uh, you want to get yourself a nice tan, they do the spray thing. They do the lashes. They're friends of mine. They're in the San Jose area over by the East Ridge Mall. So check them out, Bronze Humanity, on Instagram. And otherwise, uh, thank you for watching. Anthony Baker, Nima Meridi, Clint Cronin, Clint Cronin Show. Subscribe to all their stuff. Subscribe to this. Sacrifice, sweat, Love smile. You. Jiu-Jitsu. Your life is better with Jiu-Jitsu. Have a great week, guys. Keep it real. Out. Take it easy. If it's that easy, take it twice. But that's a wrap, so Jack. hungry. <laughs> yeah. You haven't eaten either. Neither have I. I'm ready. I'm going to go home. I'm, I'm ready. so much murder.